Welcome to Magic Arcanum. I'm Ryan Gomez. Behind the scenes is Nicole Letson, and we are so glad you're here because it's story time. Elementals are one of the five main creature types you'll find on Ikoria, but they have been a part of magic since the very first set. So we thought it would be fun to take a look at a history of this five color tribe. If that sounds good to you, thank our patrons because they picked today's topic. Use the link down below to become a patron yourself and you too can wield this power. Not to mention get access to our exclusive Discord and be seen as an all-around cool person. Okay, so elementals. How do they measure up to dragons and elves and brushwags and the other fantastic creatures magic is known for? Well, let's go all the way back to the limited edition alpha release of 1993 to find out. There were four elementals here, capturing the four classic elements. Fire, air, water, and earth. And the fifth element is a great movie. You should go watch it. They did also retroactively make force of nature into an elemental, but that didn't happen until years later. So it was these first four that established the creature type, and they did a pretty good job thanks to some subtle variations. Air can fly, of course. Fire and water are perfect mirrors of each other, and Earth has the most toughness, which is kind of rare for a red card, but it does do a good job of representing the durability rocks are known for, I guess. Elementals would eventually become the second most widely spread tribe across all five colors, being second only to humans. And it's not like Wizards of the Coast invented the idea of elementals either. They have been a mainstay of fantasy stories and settings for practically ever, so it's not surprising they turn up on so many planes in our fantasy card game. Magic, to date, has over 460 elemental creature cards. That's obviously too many to cover in this video, so I am just going to pick a few of the more noteworthy ones throughout their history. I am also going to save the legendary elementals for a future video in which I will attempt to rank them by raw power and their significance in the magic story. So make sure you subscribe to the channel because you do not want to miss that. Thunder Spirit was printed as a spirit, but was later updated to an elemental. And I only bring it up because it is the first of eight elemental cards that are on the reserved list. Now, the reserved list is a huge topic in itself, but basically it is a list of cards that the game's creators have promised to never print again, nor create new cards that are functionally identical. This means we'll never get a 3-mana 2-2 two -two with flying and first strike in white, elemental or otherwise. And that's too bad because it's like a perfectly fine limited card, right? Oh well. The next elemental I'd like to talk about is Moss Monster because it- Oh my god, what is this thing? Kill it! Somebody kill it with fire! Wood Elemental sets a new trend for the tribe with non-fixed power and toughness. This would go on to be a recurring feature for elementals. And just in case you can't read his text, he says that the stars are set to the number of untapped forests you sacrifice as he enters the battlefield. So you need four mana to cast him, and then maybe you sacrifice another four untapped forests. So you had eight lands, and it's turn eight, and you have a 4-4 four, four on turn eight. Early magic, man, it was just, it was something. Anyway, Ball Lightning is our first temperamental, temporary elemental. This would be used throughout the years to represent the unstable nature of things like lightning. Right after that, in Ice Age, we got Sea Spirit and Flame Spirit, and despite having spirit in the name, they are indeed elementals. And what wonderful elementals they are, because they are our first pumpamentals. You can spend mana to increase the attack power of these elementals until the end of the turn. And that's an idea we would also see repeated throughout the years. I think that's a wonderful way to show how these creatures are a manifestation of natural energy. The more in tune you are with a given element, the more powerful you can make the matching elemental. That's wonderful! I love it! Across Mirage and Visions, you could find a hidden cycle of elementals that were a nod to the originals from Alpha, with wave, flame, cloud, and subterranean elemental standing in as this era's fire 
water, air, and earth. Mirage also gave us Morrow, which is what we call a vanity card because it is a reference to Mark Rosewater, the current head designer of magic. Jumping ahead to Tempest, we get Magmasaur, an elemental dinosaur. So he's like a Power Ranger? He uses plus one plus one counters that diminish over time as another way to represent the unstable nature of an elemental, but you can also cash those all in for one giant explosion if you prefer. Child of Gaia. Is that how you say it? To me, this is an excellent elemental design. It's big, a 7-7 seven, seven with trample for just six mana, but you have to pay double green every upkeep to keep it alive. You have to tie up some of your mana to maintain the elemental. Now normally that would be bad because your opponent will just wait for you to pay and then kill it, but this creature can regenerate. So your investment has some protection. I know they don't do regenerate anymore, but overall I really like how all the different parts of this card come together to create a creature that feels powerful, but also fair. Bog Elemental, on the other hand, is our first mono black elemental, and it's bad. You have to sacrifice it or a land every turn, and then again, your opponent can still just kill it, but this one can't regenerate itself or anything, so yeah, it's not good. Over on Mirrodin, we got Rust Elemental, the first artifact elemental, and I'm not sure that that's an improvement. This 4-4 four, four flyer for four comes with a pretty sizable drawback. Every turn you have to sacrifice another artifact or he turns on you. So make sure you have a plan before you cast this guy. The original Ravnica block had a pretty good number of elementals with Molten Sentry showing their unpredictable side. Can you imagine paying four mana and getting a 2-5 with Defender in this economy? On the better end of the scale, we also got Woodwraith Corruptor, I believe the first elemental creature that can turn lands into elemental creatures. And that's kind of a big deal because lands becoming elemental creatures are peanut butter and jelly in Magic today. If you go all the way back to Tempest, you can find the first example of this appearing on a land itself with Stalking Stones. Now, originally it just became an artifact creature, but they eventually added the elemental type and set a precedent that would be followed for years to come. Planar Chaos brought back our old friend Ball Lightning with a color shift into green for Groundbreaker. Some people like this era of magic because it gave us so many twists on iconic cards, but I feel it did more damage to the color pie than anything else. Maybe that should be a topic for another time. Let me know in the comments if it's worth covering what made Time Spiral Block so controversial. Anyway, Lucent Limited was an elemental enchantment creature that sort of paved the way for Theros, a plane full of enchantment creatures, some of which were also elementals. In Lorwyn block, the elementals were one of the major supported tribes, so we got all sorts of fun cards, including Muldrifter, who is a pauper format MVP, and Primal Beyond, a land that lets you cast your elementals a little bit easier. The elementals on this plane are especially interesting. They come in a humanoid form, as seen with the Flamekin and Cinders, but they can also be abstract representations of ideas and feelings. This makes Lorwyn home to probably the most diverse collection of elementals anywhere in the multiverse. Elementals would continue to be a big deal as we headed into the Shards of Alara, where they originally only appeared on Jund. Thornling gave us the green entry in the Shapeshifter Ling cycle, and Nixithid was also there, probably wearing a leather jacket and hip-checking a jukebox on account of how cool his name was. We also got Hell's Thunder and Hellspark Elemental, or Hellementals, as I like to call them. The Conflux gave us Fusion Elemental, who answered the question, how big can you make a vanilla creature for five mana? Until Gigantosaurus came along. And Lord of Extinction still makes Golgari players salivate. Then it was off to Zendikar, where Elementals were once again a strongly represented tribe. 
Obsidian Fireheart often gets praise for having some of the best reminder text Magic has ever known. Just in case you can't read it, you can put blaze counters on lands, and then those lands deal damage to their controller during their upkeep. But even if the elemental himself leaves the battlefield, the land continues to burn. Vengevine would go on to become a recurring threat in the modern format, and Kiln Fiend is a pauper rock star. Come to think of it, Zendikar gave us a lot of format shaping cards, even just among elementals. So I cannot wait to see what they have waiting for us on our next visit. Chandra's Spitfire was introduced in M11, but really got to shine when it was reprinted in M20, putting it in standard with Scorch Spitter and Cavalcade of Calamity. I don't know why I'm telling you this, you probably lost to that deck a hundred times in the past year. I know I did. M11 also gave us Fire Servant, which is one of the first cards in the game illustrated by my favorite artist, Ryan Yi. I really like the pose on this one. It's like one hand is beckoning you, come here, darling, while the other hand is winding up to rake you across the face with those flaming claws. Good job, fellow Ryan. Innistrad is remembered for its vampires and zombies, but it also had more than a few elementals tucked in there as well. Malingus takes us back to the ever-changing power and toughness calculations, and Soul of the Harvest is twins with Harvester of Souls a demon. Our return to Ravnica increased the plane's elemental count once again. Niv Magus elemental is weird because it isn't a weird, which was the creature type more often found within the Is It League. Spark Trooper tacked lifelink onto our old friend Ball Lightning, and the Maze Cycle were monocolored elementals that gave bonuses to your multicolored creatures. The most famous elemental from this block, though, is undoubtedly Voice of Resurgence. The design was originally supposed to be for Amara Tandris, but it was too powerful to be a rare and fit in with the cycle of the other nine maze-running characters. So they swapped it with Voice, giving Amara a much more forgettable card, and leaving us with a token that now had art that didn't match up with its generating card. On Tarkir, Elementals had a minor presence. I used Frost Walkers in an aggressive blue deck to slip under counter spells at FNM for a while, and Thousand Winds was really exciting to me during preview season, but that card ended up not being very good, even among other morph options. Torrent Elemental remains one of the few creatures you can cast from exile. Whisperwood Elemental will keep manifesting 2-2 creatures and provides you great insurance against board wipes. And Shorecrasher Elemental is a powerful, evasive threat that works great alongside Master of Waves. All of those mythics are under $2, by the way. And we cannot skip the greatest meme card since Stormcrow. Updraft Elemental! What's Updraft Elemental? Nothing! What's up with you? In Battle for Zendikar, everyone was fighting for their lives against the Eldrazi, right down to the plane itself, with the Awaken mechanic putting plus one plus one counters on your lands, turning them into creatures ready to repel the invaders. Elusive Tormentor from Shadows over Innistrad might save you during Bar Trivia Night if they ever ask what vampire in magic can transform into an elemental. It's this one. In the Nyssa Planeswalker deck for Hour of Devastation, they gave us Brambleweft Behemoth, which is identical to Colossal Dreadmaw, except it's an elemental and not a dinosaur. For some reason, though, they keep reprinting the Dreadmaw when I think collecting the elemental with different art on every plane would be much more fun. So that brings us to Ixalan, where Wild Growth Walker was the king of the jungle, so to speak. Curving this guy into Jade Light Ranger would put you up six life and leave you with a three five. People complained about this at the time because that simple sequence could determine the outcome of the game as early as turn three. But you know what? I think magic is at its best when there is synergy between creatures rather than making any single one of them too powerful. We've seen what happens when power is concentrated in Planeswalkers and when concentrated in artifacts, and I appreciate it more when it's the creatures that are setting the tone for the game. 
Anyway, Dominaria gave us two legendary elementals, and I know I said legends were off limits for this video, but one of them has art by Ryan Yi, so guess what's going full screen? That's right, say hello to Multani, a six mana creature that cares about the number of lands you control, and he's able to dig himself out of your graveyard if you're willing to replant some trees. We have come a long way since Wood Elemental, indeed. Modern Horizons gave the format a ton of cool toys, but you gotta love Mark IV Ball Lightning, which is Lightning Skelemental, which is Blightning on legs. Or on leg bones? Ah, whatever. This card is great! The Cavalier Cycle from M20 fit with the overall elemental theme for the set, and the red one was best friends with Fires of Invention while well, that was legal. The green one continues to help Simic decks ramp into whatever they want. Uh, I don't know, an oversized Hydroid Crisis? Why not? Even Chandra got in on the fun with multiple Planeswalker cards that interacted with elementals, giving the tribe some early support before we headed to Ikoria. Hey, remember when Risen Reef was like the most broken card in Standard? That was a fun week. Theros Beyond Death had very few elementals in it, but it did have one of my favorites in recent memory. That's Tectonic Giant. And you can read all about why I love this card over on MagicArcanum.com. So that brings us all the way up to Ikoria, where elementals were one of the five supported tribes, putting them on three of the Apex Legends and three of the Companions. There's also Kahira, who is not an elemental herself, but does grant them all plus one, plus one. That's about it in terms of support for the tribe within this set, however. And now, with M21, the elementals get another push with cards like Stormwing Entity, who captured a lot of attention during preview season, but I have not seen a standard deck really take advantage of it yet. We'll be heading back to Zendikar in just a few weeks, where elementals are known to roam, but it's anybody's guess what form these creatures of nature will take on this visit. We'll probably have lands that come alive again, but I'm hoping for some legit creature cards, something to carry the torch for Vengevine, Undergrowth Champion, and Avenger of Zendikar. With over 460 elementals in the game so far, they've appeared in a variety of styles, making it difficult to give them a universal classification, but that is what makes them so interesting. Elementals often express the themes of a plane itself. They are living manifestations of mana, and sometimes they are raw forces of nature, but sometimes they are disciplined enough to follow orders while wearing a suit of armor. They've gone from primitive representations of classic elements like fire and water to incarnations of emotions like dread and anger. They've been called forth by planeswalkers and wizards and sprung from the soil itself, ready to defend the very land from which they are made. Elementals are a fascinating creature type, and I cannot wait to see where they go next. Which one is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments, and then make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the great stories you'll only find here on Magic Arcanum. We'll see ya!